Um, it is about to have a really bad storm, so I'm gonna go until I uh, until the storm gets bad enough to where I, I can't I can't deal with it anymore. But uh, I'm under the impression that we might have high winds, but we're not gonna get uh, any more rain for the rest of the night. Or if we do, it's gonna be such a light drizzle, it's not even worth running from. So uh, I figured that instead of because uh, if I waited till I got to my campsite i'm underneath the rail bridge and uh, that will be way too loud uh, for for me to be able to do a live stream um and so i decided you know what i might as well do it in the quietest place that i know on the way to where i camp which is washington park and so it's generally quiet here and i got sam settled down so on and so forth but what i want to talk about uh, at least the subject for today for those of you that watch this uh ex post facto uh you know, I, I want to talk about kind of a conversation that I had last night and kind of how I realized that uh, that I make homelessness different and uh, because I do homelessness different, uh, my homeless uh, experience it's, is much better than the average person uh, for various reasons. OK, and so I kind of I, I kind of want to talk about that because we were, you know, we were talking about, you know, is it a full time job being homeless or is it, it can you hold down a full time job uh, and be homeless? And, you know, I, because of the, the, the infrastructure that I got set up because I came out here with a plan, my plan was uh, to become a, a, a YouTuber and to get a big enough channel to where, you know, it would support me one day. And if it takes three to five years, it takes three to five years. But uh, the nice thing about the law of averages is eventually you're going to hit it. And it, it's about persistence and dedication. And so, you know, today I only have, you know, 2,300, almost 2,400 subscribers. But, you know, in two, three years, I may have 10 or 20 or 50 or 100,000 subscribers. You know, and so that is the the end goal that I am uh, that I'm really working towards. And so uh, I understood that I have to live off of meager means. What you know, I don't have any vices. Yes, I like to smoke my weed, but do I need it? No. Um, I like to have my cigarettes, especially if I'm in a city. Uh, so you know, for me, that's just something that that I uh, that that I I do you know uh, that that I do spend money on. But I know how to be cheap about it. Spend twelve dollars a month. Um, as far as finding food, if I'm in a city with abundant food, um, like Cincinnati, uh, I don't have to really worry about, uh, uh you know, I, I don't really have to worry about, uh, you know, those, those, uh, uh, you know, having food stamps or, you know, kind of trying to ration my food or, you know, pick certain types of food and stuff like that. So I don't, I, I don't really have. Uh, that that struggle, you know, w you know, because I know where to go to get food, and you know, I can eat three, four, five times a day if I'd like to. Um, there's so much food here that I mean, I will gain weight if I don't watch what I do. Okay, so um, my experience is I don't have to go out there and spend a lot of time flying a sign. Maybe once or twice a month, I may go fly a sign just because I want some extra money. Um, you know, but it's not something that, that I really have to do because, uh, of being monetized. Hold on guys. Sam is going to be, you better sit down, sit, sit. Sam sees another dog. And so she down. Oh, thank you. Lay down. She sees another dog. And so she, therefore she is getting, um, you know, a little bit antsy, but hold on. I'll finish this thought here in a second. There's, there's a lot of dogs here and Sam does not know how to hold her. Oh, sorry. Lay, di lay down. So, but, um, anyways, uh, uh, so, you know, going back on that thought, uh, just with, with, with with the way that I have my infrastructure set up between the ad revenue that I'm able to generate between two channels um, be, because I'm, I've been working on Patreon and Patreon's finally starting to, to get built out. Um, you know, I am able to spend a lot more time uh, working on my uh, working on the channel, working on my goals. I, I spend more time, you know, doing my own work and things like that to where uh, I don't, I, I don't have to, um, sorry, there's another dog coming by. Uh, there's a lot of dogs here in Cincinnati and Sam's kind of having to learn how to leave the dogs alone. 
because uh, she wants to go play with them all. But, uh, uh, and that's what's stopping me and distracting me a little bit because I didn't expect that there would be all these dogs around here, but apparently I picked the one part of the park where everybody walks their dog. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, just as, as far as, um, as far as how, uh, you know, how I, uh, you know, kind of have my infrastructure set up, I, I get to spend time on my channel. So what have I been doing while I'm here in Cincinnati? Um, I have, oh, if you go to my channel page, I now have a link to my subreddit, which is, I talk about urban homelessness and that way people can ask whatever questions they want. If you have, you know, friends or, you know, people that are homeless that are, you know, you know, struggling and things like that, you know, I, I want to open those up as forums uh, not only do I have one there but I also have one that's attached to the uh, to the Facebook page for the epoch of Friar, Friar Tuck as well uh, where I talk uh, you know and it is also labeled urban homelessness and um, you know it, it is hold on a second lay your butt down come on lay down lay lay down lay down and stay down so you know I, I don't really have to um, uh, I, I, I don't really have to, or I, I get to spend more time working on my channel and, and getting an opportunity to, uh, to to really focus on on building that and you know I also have time with Sam because like today I took her down to a dog park she got I don't know she got to play with like three or four other dogs today uh, and, and so she got to have lots and lots of fun but um, yeah she just Every time she sees a dog, she just wants to run after it, and it's I, I, it's killing me. I don't know how to stop this. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm getting it under control somewhat, but she just she just doesn't know how to control herself, and and this is something that. But anyways, uh, I, so I have the ability to kind of take a little bit of time out of my day and go spend time doing that. But I, if I want to, I can take on another project if I'd like to, uh, to where. Uh, I can I can focus on a, a, another avenue of making money because it's more than just doing YouTube. YouTube is just you know one of many different avenues. You know uh, the nice thing about people and tourism and you know coming into a city, people want to know where do they find restaurants, where do they find attractions, what you know what is good about it. They 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 want to know these things, and you know there is a way to be able to monetize something like that. This is something that one of my four channels that got deleted. This is actually something that I was trying to do. If I wanted to, I could do something like that here in Cincinnati if I decided I wanted to stay. So I mean, there's there's a lot of different. Um, there's a lot of different things that are moving, but my problems are being homeless is just, you know, finding a place to sleep at night. Uh, but I spend more time inside either at a computer or tied to a plug in working on my phone, creating content. Uh, uh, you know, I, I've been writing articles. If you haven't gone over to my website and subscribed, uh, I've been writing articles over there that have been complimenting some of the videos because I, I'm trying to make myself an authority on homelessness as far as you, being able to give people tips uh, uh, and, you know, tools to be able to navigate what it's like to be homeless because. I think with the great dispossession, and that's the whole reason why I created this channel, is that with the great dispossession, you're going to see a lot more, you know, people homeless. You're you're going to see ten or twenty times more homeless uh, in, in a couple of years than what you see right now. It's this is just the beginning uh, of this avalanche, you know, as the whole world, you know, crumbles. I mean, you're you're having Americans that are losing their jobs to foreigners that have you know come here as refugees, you know, and they're being protected under refugee status and so they're they're starting to get preferential treatment but what is that actually doing to the wages that's suppressing wages because you have a group of people that's willing to work for less because they want to be able to work and so therefore you and I can't actually get what we're worth because all of these people came across the border as the wages were going up so that it could actually suppress the wages so that even through inflation the poor become even poorer and you know they, they can't really even survive I mean you could work 40 hours a week at McDonald's making 15 bucks an hour but can you afford rent uh, and food and you know a, a car note and you know which are what now a thousand dollars a month you know three hundred dollars in insurance a couple hundred dollars a month in gas I mean a car almost costs as much as a house now I mean my my parents my, my parents um, you know a house payment is less than what most people pay on car 
uh, insurance and uh, and gas every month you know which is really that that's pretty sad that that you know just uh, what we consider a basic necessity is so far out of reach and so in order to pay for that you got to go without something else either you go without a house or you go without a car uh, and if you go without a car then, and you choose the house, now you're gonna have to choose between the house and the food. You know, how do you choose between all of those different things, okay? So, uh, it, with the wages being suppressed the way they are, um, you know, the, the average person looking for unskilled labor job is not going to be willing to work for it because they can't support themselves. And so you'll have a whole group of people that will be labeled as useless eaters or as being lazy because they, they just look at the, at the scene and go, it's not something that I, I want to, um, that it's not something that, that I want to, to deal with. Sam, kick it down. So... You know, that's just my thoughts on, on this. And, you know, this is why I think my, my situation and I think a lot of other people, if they end up becoming homeless and they tend to be, you know, somebody that watches, you know, content like mine, it will actually give them an opportunity to, you know, look at homelessness, not as, as, you know, down in the dumps, it's the end of the world, but you know, you, you don't have to be, you, you can live outside without really being homeless. Homeless is now becoming more of a mindset and more a, of a, of a status. Um, uh, and a guy in Chattanooga, you know, kind of explained that to me. And I even did a video on it that, you know, homelessness is a mindset. Um, it, it's a mindset of giving up, of, of, you know, just kind of like rolling over and playing dead. And it, it's, it's not really helpful and yes there's going to be people that take pity and feel bad for you because you know people have compassion for their fellow man but it just you can still be out here and and still have a functional life it just means that you're living cheaply because you you choose to not pay not not pay rent so hold on a second Sam kick it down I say kick it down. So, um, anyways, let me go through and read some of these comments because you guys have been really lighting up chat. Okay, so, uh, hey, Tuck, should uh, get the last thing I want to deliver tonight, then I'll get it boxed up. That's awesome, Jeremy. Um, hey, chat. Hey, Ironwood. Uh, been getting hit with some strong storms. So, yes, um, uh, we've got one that's, that's supposed to be on the way here in the next hour or two. Uh, my advice, you never take off your shoes. You never fall asleep. Um, I, I don't have that, 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 uh, issue. I really don't. Um, I, I really don't have, I, I've never been worried about somebody stealing my shoes. Um, you know, but my, <laughs> you know, if you also, if you have stinky feet, which sometimes if you don't get to change your socks because of, you know, you only have a couple pair and, you know, you're going like a week or two weeks between doing laundry or getting a new pair of socks, you know, people don't, people aren't going to steal stinky shoes. So, um, that, that's one, one deterrent that I have there. So, um, literally in the process of going homeless, now I have some, so many things. It's sad. Um, yeah, I, I go down to bare necessities, something to sleep in, uh, something to carry your stuff in, uh, something to, to patch up holes in, in you because you're going to you're going to get injured or somebody else is going to get injured, especially have burn cream if you're going to be around fires. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to want, you know, something to either like a hammock or a tarp or or but don't do a tent because a tent is going to be something that uh, they're, they're looking for tents and that's the sure way to get in trouble uh, they're they're not uh, they're not gonna get mad at you with the tarp uh, even if you make it into a temporary tent at night if you if you bug out in a forest you know or something like that so um, but uh, I have if you check out my website I'm doing I'm doing urban uh, like a whole series on urban survival as far as like simple things that people don't really think about uh, uh, questions that new homeless would have like where do I find a bathroom which is one I did today uh, there's gonna be another one you know like how to find places to eat uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on how to be able to find places to sleep uh, but I, I really want to get my cinema cinematography uh, uh, down much better uh, I'm just waiting for this weather to pass, which it should be passed by Wednesday. And then I can go uh, uh, around town and kind of show you different places 
uh, of where to sleep, why to sleep there, you know, uh, things like that. So that the individual, you know, has some idea of, okay, I, I feel comfortable. I know I can find a place to sleep. I can find a place to use the bathroom and I can find a place to, uh, uh, you know, to grab something to eat. And then, you know, from there they can integrate into the homeless population uh, as far as, you know, getting resources and getting, you know, getting around and being able to, to, to talk. But the average individual needs to be able to, you know, have a moment and, and, and you know, get the, the basics down. Because I think that, uh, I think that this is kind of what, what, scares a lot of people about homelessness and if you can take the fear out of it and give them some sort of direction it won't be such a scary transition if they actually have to face something like that um okay uh me too pumpkin okay uh the answer is no i can't afford a damn thing i need okay well um once you get to that point man i mean uh you, you got to find you got to find a, a something i mean you're building a youtube channel you're you're about what 250 subscribers away from uh from getting monetized uh, at least on getting the thousand subscribers now getting the watch hours that's on you but you know i love your eat my short section and if any of you guys want to support uh joe and his channel and kind of help him get monetized uh go on over there and, and subscribe so um uh okay so during the recession i literally had to turn to an armed robbery to pay the bills now my body doesn't work wow i, I that that's got to be an interesting story to talk about joe um you know uh, people i uh, maybe you might want to be careful on what you say but you know you can do some innuendos and kind of give a, a hypothetical of like what it was like or what it would be like to to live that lifestyle because Right now, um, a lot of these intermodals, the reason why there's so much security around the trains right now is because people are jumping on the trains and especially if they're intermodals with Amazon, uh, uh, Amazon uh, uh, containers on them, uh, people are going in there to steal the packages out and it's it's getting really bad so they have to have you know increased security not only for that but also for the military that's being moved down to towards the border so um that's something to to definitely you know think about when when, when you know as society breaks down you're there's going to be a group of bandits that's going to go out there and those are going to end up being the ones that um become the entrepreneurs of of the new black market of of kind of like the new economy that emerges out of an economic collapse so uh how are you supposed to work when you're homeless though if you cannot keep up with hygiene you, you can they you know every almost every place i've been to offers a shower even the shelters offer a shower even if you don't stay there so being able to get a shower is easy there's even places like where they don't have showers where if you go talk to the local gym and just tell them like look I, uh, you know this is my situation they'll let you come in and get a shower or they'll work with you to do something so that you can come in there and get a shower because they want to help you and it also gives them good pr so getting a shower out here isn't as hard as it was like 10 15 years ago where you know i went 45 days without getting a shower because there was nowhere in la to be able to go get a shower i mean there was uh, not unless you made it into one of the shelters if you didn't make it into one of the shelters you couldn't get a shower you know and that was what LA was like so um, okay broke is the new black <laughs> yeah orange is the new black too so um uh, it's my wife's birthday and she wants to help you out in your tip jar thank you Jeremy tell your wife I said thank you as well she always gives to others in some way on her birthday it's weird but it makes her happy you know what some people that's they, they everybody has the things in which they enjoy and some people you know it's it's beneficial i guess um so i spent two years broke and hungry living on the street i left with the full magazine in my father's gun and around in the chamber came home two years later uh missing several rounds huh well you know also look at the lifestyle you were leading to joe i mean you what you if you're gonna live a dangerous lifestyle you should expect to to have to deal with danger if you're not putting yourself in the mix of all that danger that's the reason why i'm not caught up in a lot of this dumb shit is because i don't go in the white dope crowd um and i really don't really uh hang out with the homeless very much either i, I keep to myself because i'm always creating content i'm always doing something for my channel 
Okay, and so I'm so wrapped up in that. It's just like an after-school program for for children, but for the homeless, it's finding something that you can dedicate your time to, so that you you know aren't just stuck you know spinning in circles in this nothingness. Okay, and, and that's really the lesson to learn from my story is that. I keep myself productive and active doing things and yeah, I may be playing the long game and you know, I, I have, you know, a 50 50 shot of being successful, but I believe in myself enough to be able to take that risk and to be able to live this lifestyle. And it, it, for so, so far, because I have faith in myself, others have had faith in me like you that, that, you know, keep an eye on me and, and all that other stuff. So, um, just, I think that that is really the the lesson to be learned. If you're going to be homeless, you need to be productive in some way, uh, form, or fashion. Even if you're just going and, and doing things within the community to you know get a few smokes here and there. You're running errands for people, and they'll give you you know like five smokes or whatever. Um, you know, just something to be able to keep you productive so that you're not caught in this never ending rat race, uh, which then leads down a whole spiral of things that you really don't want to be caught up in. Okay. So yeah, I'm documenting my struggles with alcohol. Yes. I, I haven't seen any of your recent videos, but I, I saw that you were doing it and, uh, you know, Joe, you have my utmost support, man. Uh, I, I hope you're doing well. I know you said it was uh, kind of painful, uh, you know, for, for a little bit of it, but you know, you, you got people that are pulling for you. So, um, I want to hear a statue of limitations is up. Um, uh, you should do a video about it. Uh, it, you know, that, that way you get views. And if you, if you do good on the title and good on the description and make sure that you use all, no more than three hashtags, um, cause you can't, if you use more than three hashtags, the system will, uh, will, won't, won't push you out. Uh, that's a, an algorithm update, but you know, this is, you know, do something like that. I, I mean, uh, you, if you, if you use vidIQ, the AI tool gives you three free descriptions, three free titles, um, uh, every month. And, uh, if you use the app, it helps you do the tag. So you don't really have to do much except for just show up and, and, you know, click buttons. Uh, it, <coughs> a lot of, a lot of these AI tools or these, these, uh, 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 AI generated tools are really, really helpful, especially if you're a single, you know, a single person trying to get stuff done and you can't really afford to pay somebody else to do it. Now there is never going to be able to be anything that can beat the human touch. Uh, I mean, yeah, a, a computer may be able to do it faster, but can they do, can they do it with the, the care and the precision of a human being because that's what makes the the object unique versus uh, you know a computer who is just crunching numbers and, and just using a, a probability a scale to decide you know one way or the other okay so I mean you're still gonna need humans but AI is at least there to assist you uh, in some way and I've, I've actually been embracing some of the tools uh, and I, I kind of feel dirty about it, but it, it's also, you know, something that, that's working for me. So why do you not wear a hat? I don't like hats. Um, uh, uh, I, I'm, I, I don't like hats. It makes my, my head itch. And, you know, my hair is too thick. And, yeah, I sweat, you know, the second it gets over 60 degrees uh, with a hat on. My friends are still alive, are criminals. Some I did a lot of dirt with. That's good. Uh, happy birthday, yes, uh, Amethyst. Uh, uh, happy birthday to uh, 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 to Jeremy's wife. Uh, went the whole year without any shower. Co oh God. Okay. Uh, all right. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I think you should start saying unhoused. Why? Why do I have to be PR? Uh, this. Here's the thing. Uh, you can call me homeless, you can call me unhoused, you can call me houseless, you can call me a transient, you can call me a vagabond, you can call me whatever you want, okay? Does it define who I am? No, no. It, it's a station that, uh, in life that, that people have used to describe and want it to be something that is negative. Well, here comes that storm. So I may be getting off here very shortly. So, um, yeah. Uh, we got wind and we got uh, lightning, but we got clear skies on the other side. So maybe, who knows? 
Um, but no, I don't do this whole I don't do this whole uh, PR thing. You know, I, I I prefer just call it what it is. You, you do not have a house in a society that requires you to have a house, so you are homeless. Okay, um, it, it, is it a bad thing? Only if you want it to be something. You know, just like the word conspiracy theory. The word conspiracy theory was turned into a bad word. It didn't used to be a bad word. Just like to, uh, you know, to conspire with people was not considered a bad word until, you know, they turned it into a bad word. Uh, a lot of this has to do with, with psychological, you know, indoctrination that we get from from our, our society, whether it be from government forces, corporate forces, or just, you know, uh, uh, religious forces. You know, there, there's always forces that are, are kind of trying to shape the way you think. Okay, so, um, and I don't want to do this whole PR thing because I, I don't think, it, it does not have a place in my community, okay? Uh, if you can't be real and if you can't be honest, then, you know, because, uh, I mean, that's just another way. In my opinion, the whole PR thing is just another way. I consider it being fake, you know, but that's just me. Um, I, I don't, yeah, I don't need to be called unhoused. I, I'm, a, I'm a homeless individual, so what? Um, what do I do? With, what do I do while I'm home? Do you automatically that I go out and I do drugs? Or do you do you see if I'm doing anything productive? And if I am doing something productive, what am I doing? Is it actually something that could work out? Or am I or am I going on a pipe dream? Am I actually offering a product, or bringing a product to market that has value? Or is my idea useless? You know, that's really what, if you're gonna be looking at a homeless individual, uh, this is really what you should be looking at uh, on whether or not you want to help them, whether or not, you know, they're, they're worth the time. But some people, they just need, they need somebody to believe in them and say, Hey, if you come up with a plan and it's a good plan and you can follow through on it, you know, I I'll help you in whatever way I can within, within these limits, you know, uh, you, you can, and those that are motivated to, to get something done, will we'll do it. But you got to be able to see the BS and look at it from a realistic standpoint, because a lot of people will say I could do all this, but they can only really do like a third of what they say they can do. Okay. So, I mean, that's just something to be thoughtful of. Um, okay. Um, I didn't ever like hearing hat until I started wearing dreads. Um, okay. Uh, I love, oh, thank you, August. I love my beard too. Uh, I see that you're adventurous. High five. Yes, I'm very adventurous. Okay, I'm facing a dilemma. I have money for vodka, but I don't have a sober ride. Well, then apparently you're not going for vodka. So um, that's the uh, that's the, that's the answer to your question, Joe. I mean, even me, you know, if if I'm too wasted to do something, then I I stop. You know, the thinking that you're bold enough to go do something is what gets you in trouble and is why you have the regrets that you have. So look, man, your opinion on things is very interesting and intelligent. You actually have a good mindset and good feel of everything. Uh, you're a good role model and a person to look up to to get off the streets. Yes, I try to be. I mean, I have my flaws. I'm not, I'm not perfect. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I try very hard, but you know, I'm flawed and there's a reason why I'm homeless and I'm, you know, I, I'm no different than anyone else. It's just how I choose to approach it is what makes me different. Okay. So but um okay so get a job start preaching and telling people you're paying a startup uh, podcast you know okay mike there is a story and, and this is what i'm going to end with because uh the wind and the rain the drops are starting to get big and more frequent okay so there's this there's this uh this business owner he goes down to mexico on vacation and he sees this other guy that's uh that's propped up on his boat and he's drinking a beer fishing off the side of it and he's offering tours right and so the uh the the businessman goes up to him and says well i'd like to take a tour and he takes him out and says oh man this tour is so good you know if you work if you work really hard for the next 40 years and buy all these different uh, boats and then have all these people working for you then you can sit on the on the dock and, and you know drink your beer and uh, and fish off your boat and just wait for random people to come by and uh, and and do uh, uh, tours with you well you know the thing is is he was already doing it so why did he need to go do all this other stuff that really didn't matter didn't mean anything if he was already doing what he said he what, what he was what he wanted to do anyways which is to you know take random uh, random people uh, that come up that want a tour and while he drinks beer and fishes off the side of his boat I mean 
if he's happy with it and that's what he wants, then great. You know, but to tell somebody, yeah, go get a job and then do a podcast. Well, I'm already doing the podcast um, and I'm already starting to do well enough at it that I'm making money at it. I'm not completely broke. I mean, I'm broke, but not completely broke. You know, I, there, there's a lot of things that are working in a positive direction. But the thing is, is you got to be able to work the long game. If you're not working the long game, uh, then you're not really going to succeed at anything worthwhile in life. Things that are worthwhile in life take time. It requires patience. It requires that you actually, you know, make a commitment, follow through on it, and really just, you know, do, you know, put your nose to the grind. Because when you first start a business, a traditional brick and mortar business, you do not make any money. You do not make any money till about year three and you don't actually break even financially after everything that you invested plus all the unpaid hours until you get to about year five, okay? And people think, oh, business owners make a lot of money. No, 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 they're, they're playing the long game because in 10 years, they'll be making enough money to where they can step back and just and just kind of automate the business and do the things in the business that they actually enjoy, okay? And, and hire people to do all the things that they don't like to do. And, you know, all it really does is it gives you control over your lifestyle and your income based upon your drive and your ability to handle risk. You know, and, you know, I think that being homeless is the same thing. If you're willing to take a risk and be homeless to to live a dream that you think is possible. How many artists have done this? How many actors and actresses have done this? How many, uh, uh, you know, well-to-do business owners have, you know, been homeless or given up everything and started a business on the streets? Uh, Dave's Killer Bread is one of them. You know, he got out of prison for murder and he created, he was a baker while he was in prison. So he took that skill set and and started baking bread and before you know it you know everybody uh, everybody and their mother wanted this bread now it's in every single store as a premium bread to have you know and it's it's pretty good bread i mean he he has a pretty good recipe okay so um would you would your reason being homeless be do you enjoy the freedom uh do <sighs> My, my reason for being homeless is because I have a dream. I believe in myself. And I think that if I just, if I persevere and, and I dedicate myself to building what I think I can build, which is a, a YouTube empire, a, a, a media empire that that is built around, you know, assisting the homeless to, you know, have a better lifestyle and greater chance of getting off the streets with less damage done to them. You know, I, I'm hoping to be able to make an impact uh, in that way. But you, know, you, I have to be, I have to be found. You have to share my content. You, you have to, you know, let people know, like, hey, here's a place that's a good resource for you to use. Uh, you know, even if you're a seasoned homeless person, you might learn something new, or you might think a, a new way about. Something something or you know whatever it may be uh because i, I want it I, I that is the dream that that essentially that is the dream that i started out with because of the knowledge of the great dispossession and the fact that there's going to be so many people that will end up being homeless that if you don't if you don't get in front of it and help those people keep their stability in some form or fashion, whether it's just, you know, building something and, and, and living a dream or, uh, or, or just getting back on their feet. You know, eventually when the dust settles and the economy starts to rebuild itself, those people got to return to the workforce. And do you want them to be caught up in the drug epidemic or do you want to give them hope and, and some sort of, of direction to where they can move in the right direction and still survive it even though they, they are going to be one of the hardest hit? You know, because the, the homeless are about to be uh, put through a, a bind. So... Hold on a second. She's about to sit your butt down, sit your butt down. So, but that's just, you know, that, that, that is why that, that is what I want to build. That's what I, why I stick out here doing what I do. And I, I don't know, I, I was even asked, uh, you know, if, if I got a million dollars, would I still be homeless? And it's like, I don't know if I would be homeless, but if I was, I would live very comfortably. Uh, I might, you know, do something like buy me some land or, or something along those lines. But, you know, if I came across a million dollars or even a hundred thousand uh, dollars, I, I would, no, um, you know, I, if I came across, 
uh, if I came across, you know, something like that, I, I would use it to put myself in a better position and give myself just a little bit of comfort. I, I don't need a lot because with what's coming, um, you're going to have to learn how to live meagerly. You're going to have to learn how to live with, with, with minimal, minimal things and learn how to enjoy the, the important things. Like I'm going to do a video and it's going to be for the, the hobo tutorials uh, over on Patreon, but I'm going to end up doing a video and just showing you guys the gear that I find is like, uh, if I don't have this gear, um, my life sucks. Uh, you know, things that I hold as my prized possessions. If I have to, you know, lay my bag down, things that I'm going to put in my pocket and make sure that I carry with me so that I, um, uh, so, so that I, I don't lose them because they're that important. They're that essential to what it is that, that I'm doing and how I live my lifestyle. So you should also do a stream about staying safe during extreme weather, uh, with the weather tonight. Meh, I don't know about that. I mean, it's just basically find a place that has cover and hunker down. That's, I mean, that's all you can do. Uh, it's not like there's some like magic place that you get to go or anything else like that. Now, if there's a tornado, maybe I could find me a basement or just find something and hold on for dear life and hope that the tornado misses me. But you know, when, when it comes to dealing, being out here and dealing with extreme weather, you just kind of find a, find a, something for cover and, and just wait it out. Uh, there, there's nothing, there's nothing special about it. You know, even our ancestors, Ancestors, that's what they had to do. If I had a forested area, I'd be putting up a tarp and I'd just be hanging out under the tarp until the rain was done. I'd put, I'd put the tarp back up and then I'd keep going. You know, uh, that's that's what that's what you're gonna do during any type of weather. Uh, it's it's nothing real extravagant. Um, it, it's just it's basic. When you need it, you use it. When you don't need it, you don't keep it. That's why there's essential pieces of gear that, uh, like, I, it, it, if it breaks, I have to replace it immediately. You know, and my tarp is one of those. Uh, that is probably one of the more essential things that I have. And there is a link for it down in the description if you want one for yourself. Okay, uh, and Amazon does sell it. So um, if a tornado gets in a ditch, uh, cover your dog. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll cover myself with the dog, or I'll cover the dog with me. Yeah, see how that works out. She might like it until I, until I get lifted off. And I, I already told uh, the fryer that if I saw a tornado, I'd throw her in it and see if we ended up in Kansas. So, um, you know, but uh, some people get that joke. Uh, Tug, tell them about uh, helping farmers uh, like the old days. Hobos would do this all the time for food or a place to stay. Yes, that worked back then, but nowadays there's so many tweakers and white dopers that the farmers don't don't trust any uh, of the workers coming through now. Uh, it, it's much harder to be able to get a job with a farmer because they're working with quarter million, half million, million dollar pieces of, of equipment. But um, anyways, guys, you know how to help the channel become a subscriber. Don't forget to share this information and every video that I have if you uh, that you watch uh, uh, everything else is down in the description thanks for watching I will see you in Saturday for the live stream thank you